uncomfortable. Who's here? Raul. Hi, Max, the cat. Enrico. Your daughter started this channel for her pets. Ooh, hi, Eccles. Hey, Fatal Framer. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hi, it did go well. I feel like I haven't been here forever. And honestly, <laughs> I've been up since seven, which like maybe isn't early, but um, I've been up since seven and I've just been like, okay, when do I go live? When do I go? Oh, fly by, you're here. Why are you here? Did you call in sick? You shouldn't be here. Hi, Matthew. I sing. Yeah, I'll, I'll sing your name every time if, if that makes you happy. It went so well. Um, I was away in Quebec City for some work. I didn't really get to see the city much. Like, I really didn't get to see the city. Um, I saw some very pretty, pretty buildings. A little bit of the Chateau Fairmont. Is that what it is? Oh, God. The Chateau. You know, the Chateau. Um, and I ate at, like, one restaurant. <laughs> Uno. Uh, yeah, just because I had no time. Mm, it's raining. I love the rain. Is it like, like I love when it pours. Is everything in English there or French only? Um, a lot of people do speak English, but I did get to speak French. Like what happens in Montreal is the second that a French person can tell that you're Anglophone, they switch. They're like, not, like it comes across very like, your French isn't good enough, therefore I'll condescend to your language. Um, that's at least how I interpret it. But in Quebec City, they didn't do that. They let me speak French and I felt like so confident speaking French. I don't know, it was really nice. Yeah, I felt good about it. Like, I think my French would get so much better if I was living somewhere like that. Like, I think if I was living in Paris or if I was living like yeah in Quebec City my French would get so much better but in Montreal they just don't let you sp it's like unless you're a native speaker they're like mm. or if you're like I don't know if you tell them you're from out of town I think they're more gracious yeah mm. oh you flew out of Quebec hi chaos uh, my stomach kind of hurts. Okay, yeah, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, Fatal. You're half French Canadian. Wait. Uh, I'm half. What? Are you? Are you French Canadian? Actually, see. Thank you. Thank you, Chaos. So true. They're a little uppity. I mean, I don't mind uppity. Uppity's like fun. It's just like, let me try. Like, come on. It's like, don't, like my French has to be perfect. Otherwise you won't let me speak. That's not fair. And I probably could be more insistent. Like I could just not switch to the English. Actually, yes. I'm being too much of a pushover. I could just, <clears throat> I could just stay in the French mode and we could just have a weird thing. Like that's what happens is you have the Anglophones who are like speaking bad French and then like the Francophones who are speaking English and and they're having a conversation like that. That's what happens in Montreal. Yeah, take care of yourself, Fatal. Make some ginger tea, you know. I don't know what you like to do. I like taking some, uh, I really like charcoal tablets. I don't know. Make yourself some like soothing remedies. Oscar, is that tomorrow? I guess it is. Will I watch it? I, I normally don't, but I could. Uh, like, but I do get excited about, what do I get excited about? 
I like all the attention on the films of the year and the work that's been done for that year. I like that. And I like all the like, oh, I gotta watch all the movies. It's like the creme de la creme. I know it's not actually, and I know there's like, it's not exactly a fair, it's not fair, but I, I like that it's like the Super Bowl of movies, you know. Um, yes, yes, Quebec French is very different than the one in France. And again, I think I would do better in France. And I like that accent better. Like if you think of all the different countries that speak French, French French, it's probably closer to like France French, whereas Quebecois is like this weird, I mean, nothing against them, but it's very specific to just Quebec. And one of the nice things about French is like, you could speak it in many, many countries all over the world. So I would rather have that accent. India or Canada, I can't speak to that. I've never been to India. I don't know. Not a tea person. It's like my dad. You could try to be, don't be a tea person if you're not a tea person. But I don't know. Then just chew on some ginger, okay? <laughs> Just like, you know, get like a nub of ginger and just gnaw on it. There are no Deadpool movies this year, I am sad. Yeah, that's the one thing about the Oscars is it's like, what about all the movies that aren't like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like there needs to be like another genre and it's not like comedy, but like most enjoyable film of the year. Can that be a category? Like the one that everyone pretends not to love. What's that movie? Sometimes you don't want high art. I've, I've never actually seen the Deadpool movies. Don't hate me, don't hate me. Ginger, yeah, ginger's good for your belly. So is peppermint. Like, I'm not even lying, you can just chew on peppermint leaves, but I'm assuming you don't just have like a mint plant in your house. But if you do, you can just, and it's refreshing. Hi, diamond artist. Mm. You just signed up for motorcycle lessons? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Eight years, yes, it's about time. Just be careful, of course, but then like everyone needs to be careful. Just be careful, but I'm so excited for you. Motors. I've never even been on a mo I want to be on a motors. I've never done that. Hmm. Yeah. Peppermint. I'm having a peppermint tea right now. Uh, hi, Iris. Um, a good quality helmet. Yes, probably. I don't even ride. I don't even wear a helmet when I'm riding my bike. <clears throat> Hey, beast, beast star, beast star. Do I know any French? Bien sûr. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your parents won't let you. My parents, yeah, they would probably throw a fit too. I have a cousin who, is he, like he had a dream of riding motorcycles, of getting a motorcycle. And I was like, go for it. And I, I think he still hasn't gone for it. What's he waiting for? His birthday just passed and I'm a negligent cousin. I forgot to wish him happy birthday. Happy birthday. So happy birthday, William. He doesn't watch this. Oh, tu es important pour moi. Did you just like look that up on Google Translate? <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I've been like, so I've been so so busy I've had like I'm just coming off having like like 14 hour work days um and and now like suddenly it's spring it's really too early to be this warm out and I know everyone's concerned and I'm just like you know what <laughs> can we just enjoy it like, it's just lovely out, but it really does feel like I went away and I came back and it's like, oh, okay, we're in, we're in springtime now. Okay, next phase, what's going on? 
Um, so it's probably really good timing in that respect because I was like very focused doing certain things. I was doing like my, my own version of like 75 hard, working out a lot and writing a lot every day. And now coming off this, I'm like trying to take some days to just chill out a little bit and reassess. And um, I feel like I'm constantly reassessing, but um, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah, I think this is the year where I just really like drop everything that I only do because I think I'm supposed to be doing it and I start actually enjoying my life. I think this is the year. I think it's finally going to happen. I think it's finally going to happen that I like like myself and I like my life and I like everything I'm doing. Is that possible? Could that actually happen for me? I think it can. I think it can. So yeah, I feel very like I don't know if you guys can tell, but I feel very like um, just excited and kind of silly and enthusiastic. And at the same time, I'm really like trying. It's funny. I'm like trying not to do too much. Like, hmm, take a chill pill. Like, nope, you know what? We're going to put on a romantic comedy right now. We're not going to, we're not going to do like an hour of Pilates. No, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do all the things that we think we have to do. Um, yeah. Yo, I'm new. You're gonna sip Diablo. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Amar. Um, that's, yeah. I am, I am happy. I guess I'm happy. I guess this is what happy feels like. Hmm. 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 Um, but what I love about this is like, I'm happy in a way for no reason. Like I know it's lovely to work. It's, it was like amazing to get to go to Quebec City, but I really don't feel like that was the thing. And I don't feel like anything that I'm doing really is the thing that's making me happy. It's just kind of like, I'm just, I'm just like choosing to be happy. I'm just choosing to like always look for like just the slightly, slightly, slightly better feeling, like better thing to focus on. And uh, yeah, so maybe I'll start talking about uh, today's topic if that's okay with everyone. Um, okay, I'm just gonna like launch into it because uh, I, I was the girl, first of all, I think sometimes like the advice like life is a gift or like I actually had someone, this like woman come up to me and I think she was an angel I think she was an angel. Barbara, I think you're an angel. Um, my parents had a concert and there was this woman who like, she was obviously like a bit, you know, mentally a bit different. That's all I'm gonna say. She just was a bit different. Um, very unfiltered because of that. And um, yeah, she was very, very interesting, but I just like, it was kind of cool because I was just able to be like so honest with her and she was being so honest with me. Um, and, and it was kind of funny because it was very much like what I had been doing all day and that I was just like, yeah, I've really just been like practicing presence in a way and not in a like, not in a like, because you should, mm, because like, don't miss this moment or whatever. Like, you know, that kind of like shame talk that gets you to do those, those spiritually right things. It was just like, you know what? I'm alive in this moment and I have the choice of either I get to tune into like what isn't here or I get to tune into what is here. And so from a very sincere place, can I find something that genuinely makes me feel good that is here right now? as opposed to like thinking about all the things that aren't here. That's kind of been what I've been messing around with. And this like woman Barbara was like, <laughs> like her last words to me were like, the present is a present. <laughs> like, you know what that, you know, like that thing. And I was like, mm -hmm, I, I know, I know. Thanks, Barbara. Um, so Barbara, I love you. Thank you. Um, it was just very like synchronistic uh, that she was, 
saying all that and she had she was like wearing tons of hearts she had this like heart sweater and she had a heart bracelet she was so sweet and she had like this husband her husband was obviously I don't know anyway she was gorgeous um why did I bring that up okay yes 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 because I used to be someone who would like I would hear that like life is a gift and my eyes would like roll back um because it it just sounded so much like it was coming from a place of like you're not measuring up like you're not doing the thing like you should be grateful to be alive do you know how many people would love to be in your position or would I and I think often that can be the tone that comes across that it's like how dare you how dare you be like so privileged and so lucky that you don't you're just taking life for granted and you should be grateful and so I think a lot of like grateful practices I don't like do a grateful practice I don't have like a gratitude journal you know like Emma whatever Hermione has one I know like a lot of people do that and they, it feels great but I think sometimes it comes from or at least for me like it really came from this place of like you're not grateful and you should be um so I didn't want to do it I didn't want to practice gratitude I don't want to practice gratitude I don't want to just like do what you tell me to do because apparently I'm not pleasant to be around or something like that apparently I'm not grateful when I should be um so I think there can be like that side to it of like life is a gift and you're missing it you're missing it there's like like if you guys know the play our town um spoiler <laughs> if you know our town that's amazing shout out to our town <laughs> um but it's just kind of like it's very much day in the life of um this little new hampshire town and the third act um is is like death is like what happens after you die and the main character spoiler emily dies and it's very like minimalist the whole set and everyone's who's who's passed is just like sitting in chairs the whole thing is that there's like no set it's all imagination um and the narrator is like the stage manager so it's very like breaking the fourth wall um and it's a lot more than that but anyway in like the death world the death act everyone who's died is just like sitting in chairs and they're looking out and they're just like peaceful and they're still and they're present and they're like aware of like how beautiful existence is i'm gonna say existence because it's like they're dead but they're still there you know what i mean and emily has just passed over and she's not ready to go yet so she asks to go back and she goes back on her like 12th birthday and i might cry talking about this um and she's so excited at first because like she's 12 and she gets to see her mom and her dad i'm really gonna cry talking about this um she gets to see her mom and her dad and she's like oh my god they're, they look so young like what happened like oh i'm i love you so much i love you so much and it's like it's her 12th birthday so her mom like made her a special breakfast and it's just like so precious and so beautiful um but but emily's like she keeps trying to like talk to her mom and because she's aware like this is the last time we're gonna get to have this moment She's like trying to get her mom to like, to like be with her, you know, like I'm right here. I'm right here, mama. And, and like her mom just can't because she's so wrapped up with the act of living, you know, like she just has like all the things to do. And they're just, they're just like caught up in this like whirlwind that is life. And Emily breaks down and she's like, no, no, no. I, I like, I have to leave. I can't stay because they, they don't see they're just blind people. They're just blind people and um and i for, I, I kind of forget where yes so thorn wilder who wrote that play i mean i think he's right i think he was tapping into something that it's like oh, we just don't see like we're just not aware like life is just passing us by it's just like all happening so fast and, um, and Emily goes back and she's like talking to the stage manager and she's like, um, 
and she says goodbye like to the world and she says does anyone really really live life every every moment um and the stage manager says like some people do the poets the poets sometimes but mostly no and um which is a little bit like hey thornton like you're a bit like patting yourself on the back there you're like i i see life um <laughs> whatever <laughs> um so I think there's a bit of that perspective which is like a bit judgmental of like I just think it like sometimes it's hard to like see those things or like to read Eckhart Tolle or things like that and and there's a bit of like admonishment in the message or there can be depending on where you're coming from like hey everyone like wake up wake up you're missing life and and it can be really scary and it can it can be really like pressureful like oh you're missing it you're asleep you're like you're dead actually you're dead over there and all you're like and everything you're caught up with you're missing it and so people what they try to do is like kind of from like a fearful place like not from like a real desiring to like be with life but more in a like trying to avoid missing it which doesn't really, you know what I mean? Like trying not to get in trouble in a way. They're like, okay, okay, I'm gonna like practice. I'm gonna work hard at being here now. And I'm gonna be grateful and I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, my things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my medicine. I'm gonna do the right things. And you know, like life is subtle and life is sly and life is paradoxical. That's not what it's about. Life is like, it's empty in a way. It's just possibility. And, and you can't actually like be present to everything all at once. I mean, like, I know there's those, I've never had like one of those spiritual experiences, but I don't even know if they're like, if you're like, oh my God, I like was the entire universe. I don't know if you're actually in tune with everything, 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 everything that exists. I just don't think it's possible. I don't know. I don't think, I think like humans are like a little camera lens, you know, and we can change the aperture, but can we capture everything in a single instant moment that's constantly flitting by? No. So like, okay, take that pressure off, please. Thanks. And it's more about like, if you're constantly worried like that that what is here right now like whatever is happening whatever you are whatever life is whatever if you're just constantly kind of aware that it's not what it should be oh i'm not this or life should be this or mm, 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 mm. like if you're just constantly like wishing it was something else that's what you're aware of in that moment you like the one thing that you have I really mean this, like your tool as a human is like awareness. It's like, yes, you have eyes and that, but like you direct all of these things through awareness. That's your tool. That's your pointer stick. What are you aware of? And you can't be aware of everything. And I don't know if you'd want to be aware of everything. Okay. I don't know if you'd want to be present to everything. Why would you want that? I don't know. I think like that's part of the thing that that's special about being human is like in a way we're like shattered fragments of a mirror and we get and what that enables us to do is we get to like experience a little shard of that mirror we get to like point our awareness our light like through that and see something from that vantage point but there's a lot to see from there there's a lot to see and yes, it's okay to be like stressed out and preoccupied with life. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Like it's okay to be a person. It's okay to be human. It's okay to like be daydreaming or be worrying or like, first of all, just like give yourself a friggin' break because that's something that you can be like, that you can, like you, that you can be present to is that like, you're just this tiny little human and you're doing your best and you can love yourself. You can love yourself enough to give yourself the freedom to not be present, to, to miss it, 
to not appreciate life sometimes. To be like, fuck life. <laughs> fuck this. I don't like this. You can be so loving to yourself that you can let yourself experience any kind of emotion, any kind of feeling, any kind of resentment. You can give yourself absolute freedom and that's perfectly fine and justifiable and it's okay. And then at the same time, it's like, I think we all just are constantly trying to move towards just feeling good. Like, I think that's actually the natural law of the universe is just like, like, I'm not going to say love, but I think it's just like feeling good, like feeling relief, feeling like expansion, right? Right? Isn't that what's, what the universe is doing? And like, doesn't your body expand? Don't you like literally expand when you feel better? And all the things that you're doing, I don't know if like you can accept this, but everything you do, even the things that you're like, why do I do this? Or like the things that hurt. I think the real truth is you do it because you think it will make you feel better. Or you think at the very least, it is the best option available to you to feeling okay. Like it is the best possible okayness you can reach from where you are. All right. And that's your experience of life. And that's the gift that you're giving yourself. And the only flaw in that is you think what it is, is what it is. And you're not realizing that you have this tool. You have this tool where you can just focus in on something that is slightly more enjoyable. That is just like slightly more enjoyable. You can just be present and from a real place, like don't try to force this. Don't try to force yourself to like things that you don't like. But in any given moment, you can look for things that you actually do like. You can look for places and ways that life actually is a friggin' gift. And I know that's like, <clears throat> I know that can be cringy sometimes, but if you look for it, you're gonna find it. You're gonna find it. And which do you like, which would you rather? Would you rather that like you're just stuck in this predicament? Cause hey guys, we're all like stuck on this merry-go-round. It's bananas, it's crazy. We're stuck on these uncomfortable, stupid horses that we name because we think we're being funny and we think we're in some kind of like romantic movie and that the lights are set just so that it's really cinematic and cool. But we're stuck on a freaking merry-go-round and sometimes we wanna get off. I get that. Sometimes you're like, what the heck is this? I didn't sign up for this. I was just born and I have to do this for how, I have to, I have to just do this until I don't. This doesn't seem fair. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it. I want to get off. And the only reason you want to get off is again, like you think getting off will feel better. That's it. You're just like, this hurts. This hurts. I want to get off. And you're not realizing that like what hurts is what you're putting your attention on. What hurts is like what you decided is true, what you've decided is true, what you've decided life is. And, and also it can come from other people. Like I'm saying you've decided, but I also mean like other people can kind of like provide that information, but you have to accept it. You have to agree with it. Like no one can put a belief on you. They really can't. I mean, I think you guys all know that there's plenty of people who are trying to put beliefs on people and like mm -mm, the harder they try. It doesn't go in like you have to accept it you have to agree with it you have to like you have to go along with it so the only thing that's hurting the only reason that you maybe want to get off the merry-go-round is if you're like this sucks <laughs> this hurts and you're doing something that you think you need to be doing that you don't need like that you actually don't need to be doing and you're paying attention to things that you don't actually need to be paying attention to and you're thinking of yourself in ways that you don't need to think of yourself. And you're thinking of others in ways that you don't need to think of them in those ways. And you're like, you're just all twisted. You're like, because someone told you that was the way to be. Or you told yourself that was the way to be. And you're like a friggin' pretzel. And you're like, oh, this doesn't, this doesn't feel great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So inch by inch. Just like untwist yourself, 
just the smallest thing. This is my intention for this talk today. This is what I wanted to start off saying and then I didn't because I was just, you know, so caught up with being here with you. I just, this is my intention. I just want you guys to come away from this like just feeling like the tiniest sliver better about yourself, about your circumstances, about your life, about the people in your life, about the people you hate. Like, I want you to feel better about the people you hate. I want you to feel better about like hating the people you hate. I don't care. It's just like, can you just enjoy yourself and your life just a little bit better right here, right now? That's all it is. Because what else could it be? Like really, what else could it be? You think like you're gonna do life right or something and there's gonna be some like trophy? And then you'll feel good. Is that what you think this is? Like, what is the trophy that you think you're going to get from, like, being miserable? Like, what are you doing? What do you think you get out of not liking what's going on? What do you think you get out of that? What do you think you get out of, like, putting your attention? Let's say it's, like, um, I'm trying to come up with an analogy. An analogy let's say there's like a big scary bear in the, is this a good analogy i don't know let's say there's something you think is a big scary bear in the room okay you think there's a big scary bear in the in that corner and you're like giving all your attention to it this is your life right there's a big scary bear okay or you think it is maybe it's a stuffed animal but anyway you think okay so First of all, you have no idea what's going on with that bear. You don't. But you start imagining how that bear is going to eat you. You don't know if that's what's going to happen. But you start imagining it. Great. Now that freaks you out. It's not happening. It's not happening, but you're scared now because of what could potentially maybe happen. And then you start thinking. Again, you don't know, but you start thinking, cool, how do I not let that happen? How do I not let that happen? I'm gonna do this, 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 this. You don't know that th that's the thing. First of all, it's a stuffed animal, but you think it's real. <laughs> and you start, and you, so you start like behaving in certain ways and doing certain things to stay alive, to like, nah, 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 that bear won't get me, that bear won't get me. And you're like doing this like weird, I don't know what you're doing to like stay away from bears, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> this is the stupidest analogy I've ever come up with. But like, you start doing all this thing these things and then maybe even like the bear goes away like he just like walks off but you don't notice because you're so caught up like doing your little bear dance and you really don't like doing the bear dance but you're like this is what keeps me alive like in a way we're all like crazy ocd people doing like weird rain dances to keep the bears away not realizing that like it's not doing any that's not it's not it's not the key to your success i'm really sorry like that thing that you're doing it's just that the bear walked away or that it's like it was a stuffed animal in the first place but you think okay i've been doing this little rain dance and i didn't die cool i'm gonna keep doing this forever forever ever ever and you know that like life is happening around you you know that that's happening but you're like yeah 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 i know i know life like life I get it you're there and you're really cool like for some people I mean I, I'm on Instagram and it looks really great what like some people are doing but I, I'm not there yet maybe I'll get there someday but I have to keep doing this like weird bear dance to stay alive <laughs> so life like I'll get there I'll get I'll, I'll get to you eventually you know but um I just I have to keep doing this and I really I'm not enjoying it and actually you know what like this is getting really tiring and I really don't want to do it anymore in fact I don't think I like life anymore I don't think I like life. And you you think that like that's what life is. You think like life is this weird little, is all the things that you've been doing, all the plates you've been like spinning in the air to keep you alive. It's not what's keeping you alive. Like so much is at play keeping you alive that you're, that you have nothing to do with. And in fact, like everything would work out so much better if you just like got your hands out of the batter, you know, but you think Oh, it's all these things and this is what life is and if I stop doing all these things I die so you just think it's like this catch-22 you think that's what life is I have to keep doing things I don't like in order to stay alive but it's kind of making me wish I wasn't alive 
And I just want to suggest to you <laughs> that you can drop all the little, all the little things. You can, you can drop it. And you don't have to drop it. I'm not admonishing you. I'm saying test it out. Like, does anyone notice if I stop doing this? Does anyone notice if I stop doing this? If I had a choice and I, and this was like the best day of my life. Like, not like if this was the last day of my life. If this was the first day of my life. If this was the very first day of my life. And I woke up and there were all these possibilities. All these things that I could be, that I could embody. All these things, all these people I could interact with. All these people I could avoid. Because sometimes that's really great too. When you get away from people that you don't want to spend time with. That's great too. All these, all these experiences I could have and all these experiences I could be like, we're not gonna do that. Why would we do that? All the things I could taste, all the things I could eat, all the things I could laugh about. Like if this was your first day, your first, first day, you haven't messed anything up yet. You don't know anything yet. It's your first day. So like no one has any expectations about like, I'm new. What do you, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm new, I'm new to this. What would you do? Like, what, what would you do? You have every second, you're just like, I get to either milk this moment, have this moment be really fun or really interesting or really like whatever you want. Hey, if you love challenge, if you love like purpose and <laughs> If you love like the serious stuff, have the serious stuff. Really, really. If that's what like lights you up, I'm all for it. Whatever lights you up, just be honest. Just be honest. Don't like take your medicine because you think, well, you're supposed to. Because then you just have a life of taking medicine. That's what you get. That's what you get. If you don't like working out, I really mean this. If you don't like working out, this is what I mean about like you always do what you think will make you feel the best. If you do not like working out, but it feels slightly better to work out than to feel shitty about yourself for not working out, you'll, you'll work out. Cause that's what we do. We find like, what's the, what is available? Like what's the best feeling that is available to me? What can I do right now that feels the best? That's all we do. But you know, at the same time, you can just let yourself off the hook. You can. Like, you don't have to punish yourself. Life isn't about punishing yourself. Life isn't about proving yourself. I mean, it can be if that's what you want. But that's just it. Like, life is empty. Empty. And you get to fill it. You get to fill it with all your rules, all your decisions, all your beliefs. You get to fill it up. And nothing and no one is trapping you. Nothing. So with that, like, can you be bold enough? Can you be brave enough? Can you be, like, different enough to give yourself as much satisfaction and, like, joy and love as possible? in any given moment, like every moment you have the capacity to make yourself happy. That's it. Any moment you have that. And it's not about anyone else. Because again, that's playing with the rules of like, well, happiness is limited and happiness is like controlled by other things. And so like, I'll be happy by making other people happy because that's the best it can be for me. No, it's not. That's not the best it can be for you. You can just drop that. You can just not care. If that feels better to not care what people think or to not live up to their expectations, if that genuine, genuinely feels better, do that. Just try that. Just try making yourself happy. Just try making yourself fulfilled. Just try like paying attention to something that it doesn't have to be like 100%. You know, I think sometimes we reach too hard. But what I do is it's like, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I'm awake, okay? I'm awake. 
and I kind of sit with that and I like search for where that really is a good thing is an exciting thought like I don't force it don't force anything I just kind of like I don't know how else to explain it it's like I search for it and it is kind of amazing like being awake okay and like what feels good in this moment like do I like the feel of my sheets do I like the sounds in the house like I don't, I don't lie to myself and I don't tell myself to like something I don't again. Like I look for what I do, I do actually like. And I look for things that I do like about the day and things that, that are kind of interesting or funny or charming. And if I'm, if I'm having a conversation with someone like, I don't know, what do I like about this conversation? What do I like about this person? What do I like about this coffee shop? Um, I've been playing piano for a really long time and I don't know, like this, this came to me like so clearly this morning when I was playing where it was like, oh my goodness, for the longest time, it really was coming from a place of like trying to be impressive. I think like I have chronic, like impressive, impressiveitis or something like trying to impress people. Cause again, I think that'll feel good. And it does feel so good when people are like, oh, like there's nothing against that. There's nothing against that. But it means that in a way I wasn't present when I was like playing and I wasn't present to what I actually thought sounded good like sounded sweet, sounded nice. Like what sound I wanted to elicit in that moment? What sound was like calling me in that moment? No, it was all like caught up in like what I think is the most impressive thing. So maybe it would be like, I don't know, whatever ideas I have of like, maybe it's like really fast or, or maybe it's like singing and it's like belting some note. Cause I've seen that on television somewhere and I've seen people go, Ooh. So then like I play music like that. Like, and it's all just like selling myself out for some idea I have about what is impressive to others and therefore kind of impressive to me as opposed to in that moment, again, if I'm going to play piano, like, am I actually enjoying this? Because if not, like, don't do it. What the hell is the point of doing anything if it's not enjoyable in some way? This isn't against like things that are hard, but if I'm going to play, like, do I actually like what I sound like? If I'm going to sing, this was like really hard for me for the longest time. Was I just like, I didn't, I would sing. And I just wasn't good enough. It just wasn't, I was like reaching, reaching for like what I thought I needed to sound like because there's like a million examples that I've had in my life of amazing singers that were deemed impressive by other people. That's what good singing sounds like. And I didn't allow myself to like listen to myself, to listen to my own voice and decide what sound I liked coming out of me, coming out of me. Like, it's not that I... I'm better or it's none of that. It's just like, if I got to decide what it sounds like, and I do, duh, but it's just like for my own personal taste, I get to decide what this is in this moment and it has nothing to do with being impressive. What's the sweetest, most satisfying sound that I can sing? What is that? Or that I can play or that, like if I'm acting, what do I think? What do I think this moment is? How can I make this moment like sing for me, not for anyone else? Because what else is it? Like, yeah, okay, maybe I get some payoff down the road where like I torture myself and someone else goes, that was really good. Great. All that means now is like, I guess I have to keep doing that. I guess I have to keep torturing myself because someone thought it was good. As opposed to like, what do I think? What do I want to come out of me? What, what, what do I want to watch? 
What do I want? What stories do I care about? Why do I like that thing? What do I like? And what don't I like? And can I just give myself as much of what I like as possible and just trust that it's good, that it's safe, that it's, that it's like safe to like what I like and have what I like and get what I like and be what I like. Is that okay? Can I give that to myself? And when you do that, I mean, it just builds and builds and builds and suddenly you're just, like life is just full of these, I mean, you just start collecting it. It's like you've just started collecting treasures that are just yours now and you just see them everywhere because you've like trained yourself to see treasure everywhere and that's what you get to experience all the time all day long all day long it's just one thing after another and it's i mean i'm not gonna get like biblical but i am gonna get biblical like the kingdom of heaven is within you right like, what if it is? What if life can be so miraculous and so sweet and so delicious? And at the same time, it is so generous that you don't even have to feel that all the time. That you can be pissed off and you can be sad and you can be depressed and you can experience like the full range of emotion and you are completely free to be absolutely anything and it will still be here for you. And there's nothing you need to be, there's nothing you need to do, and it's just available. It's just waiting. It's just waiting for you to pay attention. If you want to look that way, it'll it'll be there. Hey. Like the most beautiful, most wonderful, like everything you've been wanting is right there if you choose to look in that direction. It's just waiting for you. But it's it's okay that you're not looking in that direction. It's okay. It loves you that much, like the world loves you that much. It's just gonna wait. And you don't ever have to notice it. You don't you don't have to match up to it. You don't have to. It's just there if you want, if it feels good. If you get there, okay. If you don't, you don't. It's that generous. It's whatever you want it to be. It really is whatever you want it to be. And how could that not be like, how could that not be the greatest gift? Like how you know, because if it was prescribed, if it like already was something and you didn't have a say, you wouldn't want it. It wouldn't mean as much. You would get bored of it eventually. You could never get bored with this. I don't know. There's like birds singing outside, which is really sweet. It can be as simple as like listening to silence or listening to the rain or finding something you actually like about yourself. You know, there has to be something you like about yourself because that's what we move towards. You have to have developed some kind of personality that you like because that's what we do. That's what we do. We find things that feel good and we find things that don't and we, in general, stay away from the things that feel bad and we move towards the things that feel good. That's, that's all we do. That's really what we do in life. And that's fine, that's good. How could it be anything but that? How could it, like, how would it even work if it wasn't that? And so like, there's lots of hot stoves. <laughs> the world is just full of like hot stoves. And we know to like take our hands away. And the world is full of like ice cream bars. And we know to like, let's go over to the ice cream bar and get some sprinkles. We just like know to do that intuitively. So there must be something you actually like about yourself. And maybe just like sit with that for a while. And it might be something stupid. Like you actually like your eye color. You are like as much a, um, I was thinking about this like you your physical body like your personality your like whateverness like your you-ness you're as much like a room or like a place to live in a place to be in 
as anything. Does that make sense? So, <laughs> so if you think about it like that, it, it's kind of cool because it creates some like separation. And from that place, you're like, okay, okay, if I'm just like a really cool room at like the Ritz Carlton, what do I like about this room? And don't make it like, it's me. Don't make like all that like imposition of like, oh, but it's me. Like, what do you like about this room? What do you like about this person? This person that you created. You created it. You must like something about it. And can you focus on that? And like, you can't focus on two things at the same time. So if you're focusing on that, you're not focusing on the things you don't like. And just keep focusing on the things you like. That's it. Just keep focusing on the things you like. That's the game. Just do that and you're okay. Okay. I think that's everything I wanted to say. It looks like there's been a lot of trolls, but um, messages have been held for review, so that's good. Hi. Hi, Mocha. Hi, Shalon. Shalon, am I saying that right? Hi. Am I drinking from a tomato? Everyone is obsessed with the jars. It's actually an applesauce jar. Can I flip my hair? Oh, like what? I'm about to get grounded, probably. Who are you? I'm I'm Nessa or Janessa. Who are you? Your jar is peanut butter. Nice. I look like a ghost. Okay. Sure. Am I saying it? Chloe? Chloe J-Bug? Hi. How heroines do in films? That's not like a flip, that's like a, can I, I don't know. I need to work on it. Amber. Hi, Amber. Hey, Izzy. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go, unless anyone has anything, you know, like interesting or valuable to, to add. Mwah. old and young at the same time cool uh sophia hi joe mama joe mama i love you so much everyone just send joe mama like so much love like oh my god thank you so much for being here your stomach's better yeah joe mama where are you at come back Come back. Joe Mama, how's my progress? I just need to finish it. I need to finish it, but it's really interesting because I started it like, it was like an exorcism. And I'm feeling in a very different place than I was when I started it. Like a much better place. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I think I'm, I, I either need to go back and read everything I've written and like continue writing from there or I just need to like finish it and kind of like trust that somehow it's cohesive and like, you know, just crack out if like 20,000 more words or something and then, and then look at it. 
So I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to writing today, probably. I am 60. How did you know? How did you know? I'm 60 years old. No, I know, I need to take my time. That's just it, it's like, okay. Like, no one's, no one like has a gun to my head saying like, you better write, you better write, otherwise you're not a good human. Is that pickle juice? <laughs> what was the, oh, hi, campsite rule. Uh, the play's Our Town. Eva and Gina. Uh, what was your question, Chloe J. Bug? What's my favorite color? That's such a funny question. <laughs> I have all the things to ask someone. My favorite color? I don't know. How can I pick one color? I like that there's multiple. That's what I like about colors. Blue. I like blue. I just finished watching One Day. And there's this scene, like, if you guys have seen it, the last episode, there's this scene in a blue room. <sighs> it's probably like, it's the best scene of the, of the series. It will ruin you. You like the color purple? I love purple. Purple is the color of royalty. Can I follow you back? Um, is that how it works? And then we can talk privately? You can always like message me privately on um, TikTok if you can find me. Um, leave a, leave like a message and I'll, I don't know. Chloe, I'll, I'll find you, okay? Um, what's the meaning of life? There is no meaning, that's the meaning. Um, Uzbekistan, cool. Say hi, Penelope. Hi, Penelope. Hot it, I wish I was you. I wish I was you. Uh, yo, hi. Portugal, Scotland, ooh, Slovenia, is this, re really? What's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, I'm from Canada. Hi, okay, yeah. I'm missing like. Hi, 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 hi. You know what? I really am missing Joe Mama. Is that, or was it Mama Joe? I forgot. Um, where am I from? Canada. Romania. Oh my gosh. I love how everyone's from somewhere else. I'm like some different little corner of the world. It's so cool. Isabella, oh, I love that name, love it. Do you go by Izzy or Bella? Or there's just so many options. Canada seems like a dystopian nightmare now. No, not where, not where I am. What am I drinking? I'm drinking magnesium with a touch of cranberry water because this needs to be like my signature cocktail now because it's delicious. You go by Bella Isa. Bella Isa? Like one or the other? Wait, 
Shania, is that it? Sha or Shay? I love that name. What do I think about Bach? Bach was a genius. Um, it's interesting though. He's like very divisive. Like some people, and I was one of those people, like I did not like the sound of it. I think like more than anything, when we're listening to music, we're just like responding to like some kind of energy behind it. And so it's not about the lyrics. It's not about like the genre or anything like that or the singer. There's just something intuitively like there in the music. And so Bach is very... There's order. There's like, there's so much math in a way in Bach, in Bach's, Bach's music. You don't have TikTok. Um, yeah, if you write a comment below this, then I can like find your handle and I can find you. Okay. Thank you. With my favorite Canadian celebrity. I'm gonna go because it's like I'm just answering like weird, weird questions. Maybe that's okay. I don't know. Canadian celebrity, Ryan Gosling. Of course. There we go. Gosling. Such a gander to my goose. <laughs> Uh, Naomi, do you want me just to say Maribel? What? Hi. I don't know if you're, have Maribel? What? Have Maribel. Dan Aykroyd, that's a pretty good choice. Shania, Ty, oh yeah, <laughs> Ty, <laughs> Ty, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown, yeah, is her new movie that just came out any good, um, Damsel, hi Rachel, that was really loud. I was like, hi, hi, Rachel. Do I like soda? What? No. What is my favorite seat dessert? Croissants. Croissants, oh yeah. Like an almond croissant, a good um oh. Oh. pastry. I love good pastry. What's my fave color? We already did this. Okay. I love you all. Like really, I love all of you. Even even like you guys who are writing some messages that are held for review. I love all of you. Okay. And um yeah, if you want me to talk about something, just leave me a message or something like that. Find me, get a hold of me, because um, I'm here for you. And I want to talk about what interests you, but I also want to talk about what interests me. But, you know, we can meet in the middle, you know. Uh, and I hope you have a beautiful Saturday and Sunday. And yeah, I'll see you guys. I do this every week. So Saturdays at uh, noon. And I think, I couldn't do it this past week, but I think I'm gonna be going live either Wednesday night or Thursday. Uh, no, it should be like Tuesday or Wednesday, shouldn't it? So maybe Wednesday night, probably around like six or seven. Uh, yeah, so you can catch me there. All right, um, have a good day. Okay, love you, bye.